Good afternoon, everybody. We would like to thank the organization of the International Congress of Science and Technology, SEED 2020, for allowing us to present our work, which is entitled A Brief Approach of Microids Implementation in Ecuador, a review. My name is Mauricio Rodriguez, and I am going to explain a review of the use and implementation of renewable energy sources, including microid solutions in Ecuador. This work is being carried out under the research project MiraEste, a specific innovate microid solutions accounting for environmental, social, technological and economic aspects for isolated rural areas of Ecuador. Additionally, this is a collaboration work developed together with Universidad de las Fuerzas Armadas ESPE in Ecuador and the Catholic University Leuven in Belgium, with the support of the Flemish Inter-University Council and the Belgium Development Cooperation Agency. You can see more information about this project in the link at the bottom of this slide. This is the outline of this presentation. First, I am going to present an introduction to the problem that is happening worldwide. After that, I will mention a general concept of a microgrid, including the systems that compose it and the different ways of operation. Then, I will mention the current situation of electric power generation focus on renewable energy sources in Ecuador, as well as the policies and laws that influence the use of these energies focused on microgrid implementations. Finally, I am going to mention the discussion and the conclusions we have reached in this study. According to published studies, over 1 billion people still have no access to electricity in 2017. Also, about 87% of this population lives in rural areas belonging to developing countries. For this reason, electric power coverage becomes a crucial priority of global concern to promote a long, healthy and dignified life. Ecuador, for instance, is located on the South American continent where it crosses the Pacific Ring of Fire. Therefore, throughout the country, Ecuador has altitudes that reach 3,000 meters above sea level. Then, given these geographical conditions, increasing the coverage of access to electricity becomes a very complex issue, especially taking into consideration the high costs associated with the generation, transmission and distribution of energy to provide a final consumer with uninterrupted, efficient and quality energy. Technological advances and international algorithms have made it possible for electrical energy not only to be produced from large generation plants, but also from clean and renewable energy sources. In this sense, a possible alternative to increase the coverage of electrical energy comes from the use of distributed generation systems, which allows generating electricity as close as possible to the place where the final consumer is located. Then, the use of so-called microgrid has emerged as a flexible and sustainable solution worldwide. Microgrid is a flexible and efficient power system operating at medium or low voltage. Besides, a microgrid is composed of several distributed generation units, not only as photovoltaic panels and wind turbine as part of renewable energy source, but also as diesel generators as part of non-renewable energy source. Microgrid generally involves technologies that require power electronic interfaces such as AC, DC or DC-AC converters to interface with the power system. This flow of power generated is connected to a main current bus in which it can be an AC bus as shown in this architecture, also it can be a DC bus or even a combination of both. This menu bus allows bidirectional transmission with an energy storage system that stores this energy in a battery set. In addition, a microgrid uses an energy management system which controls and regulates the flow of power to the lot, such as LED lights, electric vehicle, or electronic device in a house. One of the main characteristics of microgrid is that it is capable to operate in its landed mode, as shown in this architecture or it is capable to operate in grid-connected mode, allowing an exchange of energy between both through an intelligent bypass switching and a point of common coupling. Finally, a microgrid has implemented in several sectors such as institutional campus, military areas, residential communities, and especially in remote and rural areas which are the most relevant in our research project. As for the current situation of electric power generation focused on renewable energy source, in 2019, Ecuador produced 80,685.01 megawatts of nominal power, 
and 80,072.81 megawatts of real power, thus being the largest amount of energy has been generated by the interconnected national system. In the last decade, Ecuador has achieved 64.88% of generation through renewable energies, whereas non-renewable energy contains 35.12% of the energy produced in the country, which includes thermal plants that use fossil fuels. The hydraulic generation has the highest participation with 62.51%, covering most of the country's electricity generation, followed by thermal generation with a 35.12%, whereas non-conventional renewable energies have limited participation with 2.36%, in which the use of energy generation is highlighted through photovoltaic with 0.33%, eolic 0.26%, biogas 0.08%, and biomass with 1.69%. Besides, the currently functional plant consists of 71 hydraulics, 34 photovoltaics, 3 eolics, 2 biogas and 3 biomass. Some examples of the use of different energy sources are the Coca-Cola Sinclair hydraulic plant with 1,500 megawatts, the Billonaco eolic plant which provides 16.50 megawatts, and the San Carlos Biomass plant that supplies 73.60 megawatts of energy. According to the Agency for Regulation and Control of Electricity, the access to electricity in Ecuador until 2018 was 97.05%, in which the Galapagos Islands that are located in the island or insular region has a 99.68% being the region with the highest access to electricity in the whole country. However, the Amazon region has the lowest percentage due to the existence of different rural communities that are far away from the interconnected national system, which makes very difficult their supply of electricity. Studies and implementations with non-conventional renewable energy in Ecuador have been found in the literature. Some of them are present in this table. Although these works are not especially related to microgrids, showing a starting point of how non-conventional renewable energies are gradually being addressed. As can be seen, many of these works use photovoltaic panels as energy sources as well as a battery storage system. The third one, for instance, presents the design and implementation on 800 watt wind turbine, which can supply 353 remote homes in the Amazon and Island regions. Otherwise, the following table shows some of the studies carried out in the country with a view to the future implementation of microgrid, where the development of this research has been concentrated in the Amazon and island regions using a main AC or hybrid current bus. The first one was an optimal power generation planning study for the microgrid in the Galapagos Islands, in which the impact of new electric vehicles and induction stuffs is evaluated. The second one is about a study of the methodology for the application of a microgrid in rural communities, especially in the Amazon region. The next discusses the implementation of an energy management system in an isolated microgrid in the Amazon region that allows to improve the conditions of access to electricity for isolated communities. Finally, another study was also carried out in the Amazon region, comparing the optimal configurations in terms of cost of the two alternative renewable energy generation systems using photovoltaic, wind, and microhydraulic energy. The Constitution of the Republic of Ecuador is the regulatory entity in force since 2008, which is responsible for setting the general white lines for energy planning. One of the main agreements reached by the Ecuadorian state is to promote energy efficiency, development, and care for the environment in terms of clean energy generation according to Article 413 of the Constitution. In addition, the Ley Organica de Eficiencia Energética promotes a national culture based on the efficiency use of energy resources. Thus, this law provides incentives, especially in public and private transport, to change from gasoline to electric vehicles to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. According to Articles 25, 26, and 30 in the Ley Organica del Servicio Público de Energía Eléctrica, LOSPE, the possibility of participating in projects or activities for the electricity sector can be given under three considerations. When it is necessary to satisfy the public interest, 
when the energy demand cannot be covered by the public or mixed companies, or when the projects are related to non-conventional renewable energies and are not included in the Plan Maestro de Electricidad. Besides, the regulation from the LOSPE allows the installation of electric generation systems for non-conventional renewable energy whenever it is only for self-supplied and authorized under the regulations issued by Agencia de Regulación y Control de Electricidad, ARCONEL. Otherwise, the resolution on 2019 issued by ARCONEL about photovoltaic microgeneration systems is available for users and energy distribution companies that install these systems on roofs, houses, or residential buildings with up to 100 kW nominal capacity in medium or low voltage. Finally, a user of photovoltaic microgeneration system is allowed to sell possible energy generation surpluses to the main grid. However, the maximum value of power that can be injected into the main grid cannot exceed 2% in megawatts of the maximum demand of the service area where the distribution company is located. Ecuador has chosen to change its energy matrix, promoting an increase in the implementation of energy generations based on renewable energy sources. The increase in hydraulic power plants has been a crucial role for Ecuador to reach 64.88% of the energy produced from renewable energy source, and it is expected to increase significantly the use of renewable energy source in the coming years. One of the most influential factors in promoting non-conventional renewable energy-based electric power generation is the documentation of a country's solar, wind, and bioenergy potentials. However, this documentation is outdated. In this regard, it will be expected that with an update of this information, the use of the country's renewable energy source will be extended to obtain energy efficiency. Also, the studies of distributed generation with renewable energy source in Ecuador have been developed mostly with photovoltaic energy due to its ease of installation and the cost benefit in comparison with wind energy generation. The Amazon region has the lowest rates of access to electricity due to the highest cost of energy distribution infrastructure. Therefore, to provide energy to remote communities isolated from the interconnected national system, microgrid is a viable and feasible solution to minimize the gap in access to electricity that currently stands at 92.77% on this region. The Ecuadorian state, in its effort to promote the conservation of species in the Galapagos Islands, has promoted the development of electricity generation from renewable energy source in the insular region to substitute the use of fossil fuels. In this context, microgrids emerged as an environmentally friendly solution and could also contribute to the increases of electric energy coverage. Additionally, the authors consider that the implementation of a grid-connected residential microgrid scenario will not represent, at the moment, economic benefits for users, because Ecuador currently has subsidies for electric energy. Otherwise, the information that regulates the photovoltaic microgeneration system is not fully detailed when they operate in slanted mode, which could generate some uncertainty among users who want to take advantage of the potential of these renewable energy sources. This work has presented the current situation of the Ecuadorian electricity sector focused on renewable energy source, where large hydraulic projects has been deployed, allowing Ecuador to achieve high percentage of clean energy generation. It also has been described the studies developed in the country regarding the use of renewable energies and distributed generation, which can serve as a starting point for the deployment of microgrid. The main policies and laws enforced concerning the use of non-conventional renewable energies have been discussed. In this context, it has been concluded that there are no specific regulations that refers to microgrid implementations since this file of study is relatively new for the country. Thus, the lack of information directly influenced the viability of possible microgrid implementations in Ecuador. Finally, it is necessary to carry out relevant studies to design and implement microgrid structures in an adequate way, taking into account several aspects such as social, economic, cultural, and political. Besides, as for the technical aspects involved in the implementation of microgrid, the cost of installation of this technology should be considered high at the beginning. However, shortly, both economic and environmental benefits can be obtained. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, you can contact to the corresponding author, Professor Diego Arcos Aviles, or to my person, Mauricio Rodriguez. Thank you again.